Welcome back to the SES Emperor of Democracy, cadets. Today, we're dropping in on a seer pass to give the bots a nuclear reminder as to why they should get the hell off our planets. To do this, we're going to be bringing the Punisher Plasma. This might just be the most effective primary weapon against the bots right now due to its high explosive damage and crazy amounts of stagger. It can deal with entire patrols of Devastators completely by itself while still being an effective tool against the little guys. If you struggled with heavy devastators machine gunning you in half, then this is the perfect primary for you. We're also bringing the anti-material rifle to help with those longer ranged engagements and to make hulks understand that they are nothing but a tin can in need of a boot heel. Paired with stun grenades, the AMR is able to make two quick and accurate shots straight to the eyeball, taking them out for good. But if you're not a fan of this particular support weapon, try bringing the LAS-98 laser cannon or the auto cannon for the same effect. We're also bringing the grenade pistol to give us an answer to the occasional lone fabricator or to pop quick shots off at striders or devastators. For support, we're bringing Eagle One as usual, loaded up with high explosives and ready to take on any patrols, fabricators, or any other dumb communist that's in need of liberation. We're also bringing the Orbital Gas Strike. This stratagem is great because of its extremely low cooldown and its ability to wipe out hordes of smaller bots while weakening anything bigger. It can also destroy fabricators if you call it right in front of their door. Next up, we got the Orbital Precision Strike for taking out AA emplacements, detector towers, or just any bot we've decided has had a long enough day. Finally, we're gearing up in the CM09 Bone Snapper armor. While it doesn't have explosive resistance, the increased number and duration of stems is going to help out a lot with keeping all of our parts attached on the way to Pelican 1. Now that you know the loadout, let's drop into combat. Alright y'all, so today we're going to be focusing pretty heavily on combat, and I'm going to break this down into three separate points, and this is against the bots in particular. But those are how to use hard cover, how to utilize choke points, and picking the right tool for the situation that you're in. Sometimes in this game it's not possible to just avoid or get things completely how you wanted it to go. Occasionally a patrol sneak up behind you, or you know, things just don't go your way. And I think this video is really going to help out a lot for y'all that have been struggling with just the sheer amount of enemies. I want to drive home that if you planned your loadout right and you paired up your primary support and stratagems to all kind of work together and you utilize concepts like hardcover and choke points, there's really nothing that the bots or the bugs can throw at you that will cause you serious problems. You should be able to kill pretty much everything even if you're just by yourself. Now, if you're in a team, like, there's going to be a way more enemies, but you also have three, four times as many stratagems. I don't know math, y'all, but you're going to have a lot more stratagem access, a lot more guns pointing in the same direction. So, for those of you that are trying to deal with the game solo or just trying to get better in general, I think that this video is going to help you out a lot with just learning how to get better at fighting. So, now that you know what the video is about, let's get into it. So here we got our first fabricator. This is a medium outpost. That means it's going to have three to four fabricators in it. I chunk my first eagle at the far fabricator, and I start trying to pull the bots towards this side of the fabricator. This is because we're going to look at our first concept, how to use hard cover. Hard cover is any obstacle that a rocket cannot blow up. Rockets can't blow up these rocks, so I know that I'm safe behind them. I get this little patrol behind me, so it's shooting me in the back, and I know there's more bots in that fabricator, so I want to get in a better position where I have a decent amount of cover from that rocket devastator. So I circle around the back, and I get behind this big-ass rock. Then I pull out my AMR and blow him right out of his shoes. And with this patrol dealt with, I'm going to go back and re-engage whatever's left in the uh, old fabricator pit over there. But I want y'all to really pay attention to that. I really don't fight if I can avoid it without having some kind of hard cover between me and the bots. This Hulk sneaks out or just wa saunters up to me, gets shot in the back by his friends before I'm finally able to take that eyeball out. But I noticed that those rockets hit were hitting them, so that had to be rocket devastators or more hulks. And it turns out it's two more hulks. Now I understand some of y'all when you see this you might panic a little bit and be like, oh Liberty, why in the hell did you spawn three hulks in one outpost? But that's why we have stun grenades in Eagle One. Takes two of them out with no problem, and the third one we killed with our AMR. So that's three hulks down in probably less than ten seconds just by utilizing both our support weapon and our stratagems while behind hard cover. Those bots had, oh, well, there's one hulk left, but I'm just going to pop him real quick. But that's three hulks down, no fuss, no muss, and I was not in any danger for the vast majority of it. 
Now, I don't know what the hell is shooting me over there. It could be a bunch of Devastators. It could be a Hulk again. But I do notice this gunship behind me, and that is my largest priority right now. So I put some hard cover between me and whatever the hell was shooting me so that I know I'm safe to take this gunship right out of the sky. And with him dead, I'm able to refocus on whatever the hell was shooting me in the back. And what do you know? It's another hulk. That's four for this outpost, if I can count correctly. But no deal. Just take him out with the AMR. Those ranged hulks are particularly easy to snap with this thing, especially if you're ducking in him out of hard cover. I would also like to say I haven't been able to show it just yet in the video, but don't peek the same angle too often if you can. And for those of you that are not hardcore gamers, what that means is don't peek from the same spot that you did before. Especially against the bots, they do remember where you are. So if you keep popping out from the same corner of the same rock or whatever, they will just start shooting at it, and that makes it way more difficult to actually land those kill shots. Now here we got a perfect showcase of why the Plasma Punisher is probably the best weapon against the bots right now. Best primary weapon anyway. Just one mag, I've weakened a lot of them. They friendly fire killed three of their buddies. And then with the second mag, I'm able to finish off the entire patrol, y'all. That was like eight Devastators, two rockets, and a few and a bunch of heavy Devastators. And I killed it in, what, 12 seconds? Just with my primary weapon? This thing is a beast, especially against those two particular enemy types, Devastators and Scout Striders. But now I'm looking at my mini-map, I'm trying to decide where to go. I haven't showed y'all a route in this particular one because the map was a little bit weird. It just, all the objectives are kind of blobbed in the same area. So I know that I'm going to be hanging out towards the east side of the map for a lot of this match. So I'm not too worried about going on a particular route. I'm more going to be going in to fight, destroy whatever objectives in front of me, assessing the situation and seeing if I can keep pushing. But you see, like, I'm able to just bully these patrols without any problem at all because of my loadout here. And this stem armor, the bone snapper, is really coming in clutch. I'm able to throw an eagle airstrike at that patrol, and I'm using that hard cover to get them to kind of come around the side to make them all get wrecked by that eagle airstrike. Eagle airstrike took out pretty much everything in that patrol except for that hulk, which I'm going to deal with with the AMR real quick. I'm sorry y'all, it's really hard for me to get off stun grenades. I just feel like when you bring stun grenades, eagle airstrikes become way more accurate and... I don't know how in the hell he survived. But they become way more accurate and it just makes it a lot easier to use your support weapon to deal with hulks. Unless, you know, you're bringing something like a spear. Now I want to clear out as much of this part of the map as I can. Because like I mentioned, all the objectives I can see on my mini-map, they were all kind of clustered together. So I don't want stuff behind me ouch when I'm trying to go push an objective so I'm gonna clear this out it's probably or uh, it's also part of the main objective but since this is the launch the nuke one this is just I need to run in there and pick up the uh, code to the missile but it shouldn't be that difficult but I do still want to kill all of these enemies so that I can keep pushing north and east clearing out all those different objectives Now that's another patrol coming in so I'm gonna throw an eagle at him like usual I'm taking note of where the bot drop was and by the way, that gas track I threw in, something that I've noticed against the bots, the gas track is just amazing at, is weakening enemies. There's so many times in this run where I'm able to just one tap a Devastator because he spent too long choking on my toxic gas. But these guys, as you can see, because I'm behind hard cover, they have no real choice but to kind of wander up at me one at a time, and I'm able to pick them off. I also throw my supplies down behind this hard cover, so it's a little bit easier for me to keep throwing ordnance at these ten fuckers until they're all dead. But since there was a hulk over there and I know there's still a bunch of other stuff, I'm moving position. I'm moving to a different hard cover to hide behind while I re-engage the enemy. And uh, remember, your plasma punisher is explosive, so if you fire it at really close range, it will blow you up. That's why I just beat that guy to death real quick. But now that I'm kind of reloaded, I'm full health, I'm, I'm going to go back in towards my resupply because I do want those extra stems and stuff like that. And as you can see, all these devastators that were out in the open kind of mumbling around trying to shoot me from all different angles, they're forced to come on either side of this rock, which makes them bunch up and makes it really easy for me to deal with them. There's that rocket devastator and that hulk, but killed the rocket devastator with the Punisher Plasma, and I'm going to be able to just kind of snap this hulk's eye out because he decided to just stand there and wait for me to pop my head out, which I was not going to do. But for y'all keeping count, that was like three patrols, two hulks, a bot drop it was a lot of enemies but I was able to deal with it by using that hard cover to funnel them in 
to a choke point. Choke point being either side of that uh, rock that I was hiding behind. Now I'm skipping a lot of this. I, I hope you all understand that like just to keep the video a little bit shorter in length, I'm not going to be showing you everything, but I don't cut out any big fights, I don't cut out any deaths, and I make sure that I show you that I complete all the objectives. A I, I, little bit of a spoiler alert, I do miss a few fabricators this run, I'm real sorry y'all. But I am able to get all the side objectives, and I really hate gunship factories, so I thought I'd include a little bit of a freedom hug for this one's imminent demise. Now I really like blowing up gunship factories, but you know what you all should like? This video. And drop a subscription if you've been enjoying the content. It means a lot to me and helps the channel grow. I'll continue bringing y'all educational and entertaining Helldivers content for as long as y'all can stand it. When it comes to spreading freedom and managed democracy throughout the stars, I'll do my damnedest to make sure y'all are prepared as well as I can get you. But right here we have a great example of why I'm in love with the new orbital gas track. And by new I mean they fixed the bug that made it so damage over time doesn't work. So this is actually an effective stratagem. You can even bring in your team games now. You don't gotta rely on it just for solo play. But as you can see, it didn't get a ton of kills right off the bat, but what it did do is weaken every bot that was in that area. I think there's a few Devastators left, but they're pretty weak at this point, and it's really easy for me to just kind of pop them off, get one or two shots in, and they fall down. Now, I see that this is one of those bunkers, and I know that I'm not going to be able to open it for obvious reasons, so I'm just going to take off and head off to the next objective. Now, this next site terrified me more than a communist in a voting booth. I see a frickin' uh, fabricator right in front of me, but in the distance there's a stratagem jammer. And to top it all off, I'm surrounded on all sides by patrols and fabricators, so I'm gonna have to kind of fight my way to the stratagem jammer without using any stratagems myself because they are obviously jammed. That means I gotta rely on my primary and my support weapon, or my grenades if I really just need to get the hell out of there. So I take out that rocket devastator, I forget that I can't use my fucking stratagems for right now, so I run my ass off to this stratagem jammer to deal with it right quick. Because without this thing dead, I'm not going to be able to really operate in the area well. Now when there's a stratagem jammer, you want to look to see if there's a fabricator that's kind of attached to it. You see right here, that fabricator, how it's attached to the actual stratagem jammer? If you ever see this, you can take out the fabricator and it will destroy the jammer and you don't need to do the stupid little mini game where you turn on and off the computer. But with that substantial obstacle out of the way, we can circle back to where we were and start dealing with those different objectives. But, because this is a foggy as hell planet and I can't see what the hell's out there, I want to get on some high ground and just kind of assess the situation. I see a bunch of little bots, so I'm going to pick them off real quick. But I'm really looking to see what are those patrols doing, did they keep chasing me? Basically what all's out there, because right now I've got the high ground and I can always dip behind this railing because it's hard cover. And if I really needed to, like if there was a horde of bots coming, well right here's a big old choke point. So that was the plan, was to funnel anything that was chasing me back up that choke point. Hi tank. I don't know why bot tanks just seem to appear out of nowhere in every one of my videos, but for some reason this is a consistent theme where these stupid fucking tanks just sneak up to me. So I'm going to just pop it with the AMR. As you can see, I'm missing a few shots because the barrel's so long. But I take out the tank and I'm just going to keep moving on. There's a fabricator back here I really wanted to destroy, so I'm just going to chunk an eagle at it. And for those of you that are not in the know, if you throw a stratagem right while you dive, you can throw it a little bit farther. In my experience, it's slightly less than if you have the servo-assisted upgrade and you just chunk it from, you know, not moving at all. But uh, it definitely helps a little bit. So here we got this uh, escape pod that we need to un upload the data from. So I'm going to throw a resupply right next to my feet, and I'm checking for any kind of threats. I see a bunch of devastators off in the distance, and they give me a warm hello. So I'm going to throw a gas track between me and them, because this big piece of hard cover is going to make it so they have to keep walking towards me. They're not going to just stand still while they can't actually hit me. So they're going to walk through that gas cloud and get beat all to hell, so my Punisher Plasma can finish off the majority of them. But just in case they're not dead enough already, I'll throw an Orbital Precision Strike right behind that rock for anybody that was walking up behind that Heavy Devastator. Thankfully nobody else wanted a piece of me and I was able to just complete the side objective uh, relatively safely. But I do see the primary objectives close by, so I'm going to need to run through this field that just had a whole bunch of enemies in it, but it was pretty uneventful so I skipped it for you. Fighting up this hill, we got a big crowd of little bots, and I think this is a good example of the Punisher Plasma's flexibility. 
While it's specialized at killing Devastators and Scout Striders, it can still handle these little guys pretty well, especially if you use the kind of arcing motion of the projectile to shoot over cover or like up a hill where they, they can't see me right now, so I can just shoot at them freely. Uh, this is one of the many things that just makes this weapon amazing. Now, if this weapon does get adjusted, let's say, I don't want y'all to panic. There's plenty of other options. I just wanted to showcase this particular weapon because it's extremely easy to use. By the way, don't mind the casual rocket dodge there. Sometimes I have my cool moments. But it's incredibly easy to use, and it's just very effective at the most dangerous things that the bots have. But if we want to look at other options, we got the Jar 5 Dominator, we got the Eruptor. I know it's been nerfed, I understand. It's still good at killing Devastators and Scout Striders. We've got the Diligence Counter Sniper, we've got the new Pummeler. There's a lot of different options. It's just, your primary weapon is really going to depend on what stratagems you're bringing and what support weapon you're bringing. For instance, if I want to bring the Diligence Counter Sniper or the regular Diligence or even just an Assault Rifle, I'm not going to bring the AMR because it's going to be so hard to deal with heavy Devastators unless I'm just a god aiming, which y'all know I am not. So instead, we'd bring something like the Auto Cannon because the Auto Cannon does exactly what the Punisher Plasma does just from a support weapon platform, which means it's usually going to be a little bit more effective. I can take out any Devastator in the game in three shots. I can kill Scout Striders in two and I can still use it to kill hulks. So if I want to bring a different primary that's not focused on killing devastators and scout striders, then I'm going to bring a support weapon that is focused on killing those enemies. And also don't forget to rely on your stratagems. Like right there, I could shoot at that with my primary weapon, but instead I'm going to throw a stun grenade and a gas track and that's just going to kill the whole drop, y'all. I, I don't have to do anything else. Why would I waste ammo when I don't have to? I just hope this is driving home the point that you're your weapons have their roles, and as long as you're using the concepts like hardcover and create and choke points, if you know your loadout and you brought, you came prepared, you can deal with anything. For example, here's seven heavy devastators. I'm going to just throw an eagle airstrike and a stun grenade, and I'm going to give them a hug, because I know that that airstrike's going to kill all seven. See, no problem. There's no primary in the game that could ever do that, and if it could, it really should be adjusted, because it'd be way too strong. So for these kind of big problems, we use stratagems. For little problems, we use primaries and support weapons. And that's always how the game's going to be, y'all. So if that takes some adjusting for you to get used to, don't worry about it. It's all right. This game doesn't teach you shit. So that's why I'm here to help y'all get a little bit better at the game by telling you the things that Super Earth does not tell you in training. Now I'm sure you, some of y'all might be getting tired of me rambling on about weapons. So let's get back to the action. Here, I've cleared out a bunch of enemies behind me, and I still want to push forward to the next primary objective. The clock's getting a little bit low, but I do still have time to look for secondary objectives, and I know that that's probably going to have some, uh, some goodies at it, so I wanted to take out the enemies there. Also, just to get rid of the static enemies that are on the map, static enemies are enemies that just spawn in as soon as you drop. They don't have patrols or anything like that. They just exist. You, you see them all the time at points of interest or at major objectives that kind of stuff but clearing them out gives you a lot more space to work with because if i'm like off near the next objective fighting a patrol and i need to retreat and i snuck by this objective it still have all the enemies at it so i might catch a rocket in the back i might get swarmed by little bots there's a lot of stuff that could go wrong but here i'm going up against a heavy de or a heavy fabricator outpost this is going to be a big one so what i want to do is I've got my resupply out, and I'm looking for a piece of hard cover. I see this rock, so I'm going to throw it behind it, and I'm going to keep advancing forward. That's going to be my fallback position, y'all. I don't need to wait to pick it up. I'm going to go over here and pick off what I can, throw some eagles, get the bot drops called in, and I'm prepared for a fight. I know I'm going to have to fight this big outpost, because I don't have anything that can kill fabricators from very long range. I'm going to have to rely on my eagles or my grenade pistol to do that. So I move up here, try to take out the tower, I throw an eagle at the two fabricators that are next to each other, and I'm just going to be killing off whatever spawns, whatever's going to be uh, popping up until this fabricator is dead. Because I do want to fight through it, I don't want to move on to the next one, because when I was filming this, I really wanted to focus on the combat. So y'all see, I get a little bit overwhelmed, I'm a little low on stems, so I'm going to go back, grab up my resupply, and start chunking stratagems at these stupid trash cans. First off, I'm throwing that precision strike, hopefully take out the tower, but if it doesn't, it's alright. 
And I'm throwing that gas track in that like little canyon you just saw where there's a ton of little bots and there's a big bot drop. You'll see the kill counter here. It goes pretty nuts just from that one gas track. I get stuck on a fucking bush and I start getting chopped to pieces, but because I'm in the bone snapper armor and my stem lasts a long time, I'm able to somehow survive to being turned into sashimi by these stupid fucking chainsaw wielding jerks. I shoot the hell bomb to let them know what I thought of that and deal with most of the things that were chasing me. But now I'm going to sit behind my hardcover, I'm going to wait for the smoke to clear, I'm going to use my AMR to kind of peek around and see what's out there. I saw on my radar there is still stuff, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run up, engage anything that's small, and I'm going to try to make it to the next piece of cover, which is going to be that rock on my right. And I see right there, there's a big-ass patrol full of Devastators, so I'm trying to survive throwing stun grenades, and I get shot in the face and die. This is the first death of the run. I do die a couple more times. I think I die four times in total, but it might be three. So I drop back in behind a piece of hard cover, far enough away that the bots aren't immediately aggroed on me, and I can kind of take stock of the situation. This is going to help prevent me from doing what's called a death spiral. If I were to just drop right back on my equipment, I know there was a whole ass patrol there, y'all, so I would probably just die again trying to get my stuff back. So I'd much rather drop a little bit further away behind some kind of line of sight blocking terrain, preferably that can't be blown up if possible. And I'm going to use my Eagle Air Strikes and my Punisher Plasma to kind of soften up all those guys that are hanging around my AMR, because I really need that back if I'm going to be fighting any kind of hulks or anything that's going to pop up. Now there is a Hulk coming, but I do still have an answer for this. I got an orbital precision strike and I have a stun grenade. I'm gonna, you know, get, get that shit out of here. But I'm able to stun them right on top of the orbital precision strike, takes out the rest of that patrol, and kills the Hulk. Once I see that the Hulk's dead, I feel a little bit more confident to kind of push up. I think most of the big scary enemies have died uh, from all the stratagem tossing. So I'm able to go back, get my stuff, and I'm going to go back to what I was doing, which is destroying this big-ass stupid outpost. But while I'm formulating my plan of attack, I notice that detector tower in the distance, and that's going to be a big priority for me to deal with. So I was hunting for my supplies, I didn't see them, I think I was looking behind the wrong rock. But I'm still going to push up, and I'm still going to try to take out the rest of this outpost before the next bot drop can get called in. I still have about like a minute before the bots can even call in a drop, so... I can use my remaining eagles to take out the rest of this outpost. And uh, obviously, just one, one second here. Let me just uh, deal with this real quick. All right, there we go. And uh, yeah, I'll just finish off any of the little bots that are left over. Now, I only have one eagle left. And as y'all know, I do try to use my eagles if they're low because I want to put them on cooldown. But I did see an opportunity to try out something I've been wanting to try since I learned about it a few days ago. And that's that a orbital gas strike can actually destroy fabricators. Which... I don't know, in this run I was kind of testing it out, but if you're able to do it reliably, we might not need to bring the grenade pistol in the future. We can probably bring something else. So I see that patrol coming, and I'm just going to test out my orbital gas strike here. So I throw it, and just so you know, the way you got to get this in order for it to work is you have to throw it right in front of the door, like right at the front of the outpost. And the shell that dispenses the gas will then land on the outpost and destroy it. Now that that's destroyed, I'm going to resupply up, and I'm going to move on to the next objectives. But, I do see the clock is getting kind of low, and I know I need to go deal with this detector tower. And for the keen-eyed among you, you'll see that there's a fucking gunship factory right behind it. So this is an extremely dangerous combination of side objectives to have to deal with. And it's going to take a lot of time for me to just work my way through. But I really wanted to show you all this because this is a very prolonged fight that's going to be coming up after I destroy this detector tower. So I run up to the wall and I try to get to a point where I know I can't just be shot from any direction. If I really start to get overwhelmed, I'm going to go hug that wall and they're not going to be able to shoot at me because they can't aim over the side. So this gives me a good chance to kind of pop off these devastators and I see that I'm going to start getting overwhelmed here shortly just by the sheer amount of enemies. So I'm going to throw my last eagle right there at my feet, and I'm going to keep running around the side of this objective. Again, using the walls as cover, but also using them to funnel the enemies in to all of my explosive weaponry. If you'll notice, all of my weaponry and stratagems is pretty much area of effect, with the exception of my AMR. That's a single shot weapon, but I've got a grenade pistol, I've got a punisher plasma, and I've got a bunch of explosives from the orbital or from eagle one. So if I can clump up enemies, my stratagems and my primary are both going to be more effective. 
And I really need to clear these guys out quickly because these gunships, if I don't kill them fast, they'll keep spawning. And if I have to start dealing with four or six gunships, the run might just be over, y'all. So I need to fight my way up this outpost because I don't want to keep getting surrounded. I know that Hulk's down there. But I also know that I've killed most of the enemies that were up here. So it should be relatively safe for me to try to take out these gunships. Now I have to do a little bit of cartwheel practice here just because there's so many freaking explosions going everywhere. And I get set on fire by one of those barrels. But this is a good example of a time when it's not good to panic. I got a Hulk in front of me. I got two gunships around me. And I know that if I don't kill them quickly, they're going to keep spawning more. So my number one objective is to kill this gunship and then kill his buddy. But because he's kind of swaying back and forth and there's all these rockets and all this other crap going on, it does get pretty hard. I get blown up and tossed against the side and I die again. So here we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to drop as far away behind hardcover as I can. And since I know I need my AMR, I'm going to just call in another one. Usually I'll try to go get mine back. But the gunships are a real problem and I need to kill those. Thankfully, because I was, well, because I died, that's weird to say, I was able to get far enough away from the other enemies that it's going to be a lot easier for me to focus on these two gunships. Now, I do eventually take this one out as soon as I'm done being cartwheeled around, but a couple more shots to its engine should take it out. There it goes, and I go flying as well. I somehow get saved by the water, but that's all right. And the last gunship we're able to take out with four quick shots to its engine. This is going to be how you take out gunships with the AMR. I see one Hulk, and then I see two more Hulks, and I see a bunch of lasers coming at me out of nowhere. So this is where I need to tell myself not to panic, throw that stun grenade out, and try to get those Hulks to kind of funnel in on that rock so that Eagle One can take them out. While I hide behind the only piece of hardcover available to me in this like tiny little boulder that's barely sticking out of the ground. And I'm in a good position to take out these Hulks, but then I get shot by a rocket devastator, blows me back out of cover, and so I know I'm not safe until that guy is dead. Now that he's out of the picture, I get shot in the face again. But here I'm going to be able to drop much closer to my body. And I think that's the last death of the run. There might be one more. But I drop back on my own corpse. And I'm able to quickly grab my AMR after going prone and throwing an eagle. I'm throwing the eagle because I don't want to deal with those hulks anymore. And I do hear these guys coming up behind me with another patrol. So I stagger them a bit with my Punisher Plasma, dodge this guy's corpse, and I throw a stun grenade at him, and I'm just going to haul ass in the other direction, because I'm getting pinched from all sides now. Here's another patrol. I'm going to throw my last eagle and another stun grenade at him. Hope y'all are catching the theme at this point. And Eagle One's going to take that patrol out, no problem, and I'm going to be able to circle around the other side of this uh, objective and start heading towards the gunship factory. Now, there wasn't much that happened in between this and that. I took out two more gunships. That's what you saw falling out of the sky there. I throw down my resupply because I see this gunship factory and I know it's going to take more than one hell bomb. There's no way I'm going to be able to get both of those gunship factories with one hell bomb. So I'm kind of preparing myself just in case I need to fight again. Another patrol shows up, so I throw my stun grenades and get to work with the Punisher Plasma. This right here I think is probably the best example of why this is so freaking good against Devastators, but this is a bug I've been encountering a lot recently, and it's very frustrating. You gotta get blasted under the terrain. But the way you deal with it is you stem yourself and then use an explosive. Usually you'll survive this and it'll pop you out the other side so that you don't have to just, you know, accept your fate and just kind of wallow in sadness. I've, I'm sorry, y'all. I hate when that happens. I really wish that the... Uh, that these kinds of things could get fixed, but we'll just have to be patient. So I'm throwing down my next hell bomb because I do still need to deal with this other gunship factory. I did blow up the other one, but there's still another one. I told y'all one single hell bomb wouldn't kill both of these. They're too they're too far apart, like they're spaced too far apart. If they're a little bit closer, you can take out both with one hell bomb. But here we just got to do the hard work and take them both out individually. We clear out the last enemies and we activate the hell bomb before hauling ass out of here. This is a big old per or secondary objective that we've taken care of, and now I don't, hopefully, have to worry about gunships at all. This is my third gunship factory I destroyed, if you know we're going by the towers, not by the actual, like, objective. But I'm real relieved to have that be behind me, and I can keep moving on. But, if y'all see the clock, I only got six minutes to finish this whole mission. And I still got one primary to do before I can go launch the nuke. 
So I hauled ass to the oil refinery so I can fuel up the missile. I throw the gas track at it to kind of weaken any enemies, any static enemies that are sitting around that objective before I go in and try to clear out the rest of them with, you know, the old-fashioned way. I see a patrol of Devastators over there that's kind of like stuck on the objective. They, they, they don't seem like they can move. So I'm taking advantage of that while staying behind some hard cover. Instead of taking my time to just pick that guy off with the AMR, I figured, well, screw it. Why not just go kill him with the Punisher Plasma? And I'm able to clear out the rest of these enemies pretty easily. I throw an eagle right where that one's going to drop, followed up by a stun grenade. I'm going to keep saying this, y'all, until y'all start doing it. I'd really like to see this in my games when I play with teams, but stun grenade plus eagle airstrike, most overpowered combination in the game, and it's not even close. So we dealt with the bot drop. We killed all the static enemies. We killed a patrol, so I was able to finish the objective, but now this is where I'm like, God damn it, I'm not going to be able to finish all the... I'm not going to be able to full clear the map. I don't have enough time. So I just got to haul ass straight to the nuke and get this sucker in the air before I run out of time. I don't want to, you know, fail the mission. I don't want to not get my honorable duty at least. So I'm going to make sure that I get this done. So I find a good spot to camp out and clear out all the static enemies, which in this case is like five heavy devastators. I don't know. Bots are really going nuts with these heavy devastators recently. But the AMR in this situation probably perfectly suited to deal with them. Just one quick headshot and they're out of commission. So now I've got to fuel up the missile and get everything going. And I've only got two minutes left to stratagem. So I'm going to make sure I throw a resupply so I have that available for whenever I need it. And then I'm going to go hit the button and start this whole process. Because it does take quite a while to get this missile in the air. I know at this point that the Pelican is going to have to be called for the emergency evac. There's no way that this objective gets done in a minute. As you can see, I only got 45 seconds left. But I see a patrol coming, so I do what I tell y'all always to do. Be aggressive. Fight this proactively. I don't want to try to hide and pansy foot it around because it's entirely possible that more patrols show up and I'm on a tight, tight clock. And if I die one more time, well, if I die when the clock is out, uh, I'm screwed. The mission will be over and I will have failed democracy and liberty. And you know I'm not about to do that. So I throw out all my stratagems because I know that I see the clock's only got 14 seconds left. I go up, I see that tank still alive, so I'm going to throw a precision strike at it. And then as I'm kind of waiting for that to go off, I get shot in the face out of nowhere with three seconds left. So this is going to be our hero life. This is our last life. Our destroyer has departed. It is just us and what we have on our backs. So we're going to have to just try our best to survive and get the missile in the air and make it to the evac point. Even though the stakes are very high at this point, I'm still going to be trying my best to be proactive with whatever kind of threats show up. I don't know why this guy's just staring at me, but I got 20 millimeters of freedom to deliver to him. Uh, I go by without much of a hitch, and I'm able to launch the missile, and thankfully, the extract is relatively close. I got one minute until Pelican 1 touches down, so I need to haul ass all the way there, survive any patrols that show up, and get on the Pelican before I die. So I find a nice little corner to hide in, I look at my map, I just stare at it, and make sure I avoid the patrols, only because my stratagems are out. And like I told y'all, big problems are solved with stratagems, little ones are solved by primaries and support. But I'm able to sneak my way onto Pelican and get the hell off this stupid planet. Well that's the run y'all, I hope you've enjoyed it, and the focus on combat in this one. Try to remember about how to use hardcover and that stratagems and primaries each have their place. Same with support weapons when it comes to dealing with the enemies of democracy. We missed a few fabricators on this one, so we're not getting that outstanding patriotism, but we do get a superior valor. If y'all want to see a different way to play this game, whether solo or with a team, tune in for next one where I show you how to stealth through a mission without dying once and clearing every side objective on the map. I think some of y'all will enjoy it. Until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.